The Samsung Galaxy S6 came out in 2015 and was one of the biggest Galaxy upgrades of all time. With a full new design featuring glass on the front and back, bringing Samsung into a more premium space compared to the plastic of old. It was a higher class device without a doubt, and yet it manages to hold the title of the most hated Galaxy phone of all time. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and not even the Note 7 gets Samsung fans as heated as the Samsung Galaxy S6. Why? Well, it removed a lot of features people would buy a Samsung for in the first place. So today, let's talk about how this very controversial phone holds up six years later. If you're unaware of all the little changes with the Galaxy S6, you might be surprised hearing it's considered the worst Galaxy phone, especially looking at it compared to the years prior Galaxy S5. It's so much nicer looking, and even if you do prefer the plastic, there's no denying the glass is just a much more premium material to use. The issue was that it removed a lot of the extra functionality of the S5, such as expandable storage, water resistance, and a swappable battery for starters. These made up a feature set that Samsung owners wanted and oftentimes were the reasons they would buy their phones. That's what set them apart from iPhones, and yet the Galaxy S6 dropped all that in favor for a more aesthetically pleasing design, kind of like an iPhone. And in all fairness, Samsung heard these complaints. The next year, the Galaxy S7 would bring back many of the removed options while retaining the glass design, and it's still to this day remembered as one of, if not the greatest Galaxy S phone ever made. The contrast between these two phones with only one year difference is insane, especially because they look basically identical but it showed an important lesson Samsung had to learn. You can't just desert your core audience to try to appeal to a wider one. Yeah, people didn't want plastic phones anymore, but if your fans are unhappy, that sentiment will spread even among average consumers. It's funny because from what I've seen, a lot of the initial reviews were actually very positive. The design was a much needed upgrade and the curved edge display was fantastic looking back in 2015. And yeah, that curved screen. So there's actually a few Galaxy S6 models, the regular Galaxy S6, the S6 Edge, and the S6 Edge Plus, which would be released a few months after the prior two. In modern times, the phone lags far behind in software updates and feels its age without a doubt. The battery life on most of these older phones will likely also be pretty bad, and a battery replacement is a difficult repair on the S6. All in all, this isn't a phone you want to be using anymore, even if it was once top of the line, and I mean, that shouldn't be any surprise. The S6 might have been controversial, but it still did a lot of good for the future of Samsung's brand, and I'd say it's still most certainly worth looking at over a half decade later. So let's back up here a little bit and start with the main new addition, the design. The Samsung Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge are absolutely beautiful phones. I'll say it, they really are gorgeous. And compared to most phones from back around 2015, the S6 truly stands out. Most Androids either still kept using plastic or moved to aluminum like Apple. And so having a glass phone so early on before it was the norm is a noteworthy achievement, especially because even a good few current Galaxy devices still have glass backs. But if this design element wasn't commonplace, why use glass, especially if it's going to be a lot more fragile than plastic or aluminum? Well, the S6 and S6 Edge were the first Galaxy phones to bring Qi wireless charging, which meant gone were the days of fumbling with your micro USB cord as you could instead simply place the phone down on a wireless charging pad of some sorts. Even today, I still use wireless charging every single day, and iPhones wouldn't get the feature until 2017, so to see it so early on with the 2015 phone here is pretty cool. You you might remember that the Galaxy S5 had this annoying flap thing that you would put into the charging port, and that was actually there to seal the phone for water resistance. Given it had it, you probably would assume the S6 had water resistance as well, but uh, that's not the case. So drop it in the toilet, then you're essentially giving it a burial at sea. And this is where I have to humiliatingly admit to killing my Galaxy S6 Edge last year, my first one. I was out filming at the ocean on the beach, and I had forgotten to check that the S6 did have water resistance, but I assumed it did because the S5 did, so there's no way it couldn't have it, right? So much like this awesome clip of my iPhone 11 Pro, I dunked the S6 into the ocean very briefly to get a shot. And uh, yeah, not a smart move. And sure enough, it wouldn't turn on afterwards. So yeah, I'm, I'm stupid, I'm dumb. You can make fun of me in the comments. I just thought it was kind of a funny story. And I do find it crazy Samsung would just remove a feature like that, where there was such potential for people that would upgrade yearly to just assume it had some form of protection. 
I doubt most people were dunking their phones into the ocean like me, but I digress. I did take apart that phone in an attempt to repair it. You can clean it up and get rid of the residue and whatnot, and as far as I remember, I actually did get it to boot again. But so many months later, now all it does is show a charging symbol on the screen when it plugs in, and uh, it never boots, so I just went ahead and bought another Galaxy S6 Edge, this one being gold. And for colors, we actually have some really nice variety. There was the black that I had. Uh, it's actually more dark blue color, and it looks fantastic. There's also the gold, of course, and there's white, a green emerald color exclusive to the Edge, and a blue topaz color exclusive to the normal S6. It was nice to see some variety in a time where typically phones were black, white, silver, gold, and that's about it. The glass pane on the back is very clean, with the classic square Samsung camera near the top, in the center, and the flash to the right of it. The Samsung logo rests underneath. Flipping the phone over, we're blessed with the beautiful curved screen. But before we focus on that, I just have to mention the Samsung logo again. This time right on top of the display. This was done in Samsung's for years until the S8, and it was kind of a trademark design element, but in every review I do of these phones, I have to mention just how much I hate it. Branding on the back is great, but on the front, really, do users absolutely have to be reminded they're using a Samsung every time they look at the phone? I just find it so annoying, but it's an extreme nitpick, so let's turn to that screen. The regular Galaxy S6 has a 5.1 inch display with a resolution of 1440 by 2560 and pixel density of 577 pixels per inch. This here is actually my S7, but it looks the same as the regular S6. The resolution and size is exactly the same on the S6 Edge, which of course has the edges rolling over in the waterfall display style we've all become so accustomed to over the years. This wasn't the first implementation by Samsung, but it was the first to properly hit the mainstream, and there's no questioning how fantastic it looked at the time in the world of thick bezels. That being said, I've personally never been a fan of the curved sides. Sorry, maybe unpopular opinion. I find it results in a lot of accidental touches. You also get the light reflecting off it most of the time, which can be a bit distracting. Obviously, it's my opinion, so feel free to ignore it, and I do think it looks awesome. Below the screen, we have the home button, which hosts a fingerprint sensor, which performs fine, better than the S5, by a lot, actually, but it is a little slow in today's context. Beside the home button, you have the multitasking and back buttons that would light up when used, and I've said it before, and I'll say it again, I absolutely love that Samsung puts these here. They're not pretty, but these were the days of most Androids having these unnecessarily huge bezels on the bottom, and then taking up even more space on the screen by having a fully digital navigation bar. Just a bad use of real estate, and the 2016 Google Pixel is a good example. Might as well use the bezel for something. The Galaxy S6 Edge Plus has a 5.7 inch display with the same resolution. I don't have one, but it's basically this phone, but bigger. And it has an extra gigabyte of RAM. All this culminates in the best looking Samsung Galaxy of all time up to this point, even if fans were unhappy about it. Another highlight of this phone was the 16 megapixel camera, which was pretty good for 2015 and performs, well, you can see photos here. This is a good example of megapixels not being everything. And although this was strong at launch, it hasn't held up fantastic a half decade later. Not that it's fair to expect it to. It does best in good lighting, preferably outside, move indoors or in poor light conditions and the quality degrades significantly. It did the job though, and in a bind, it still could. Although I'm grateful that modern phones have come so far in so little time. Video could be filmed in 4K at 30 frames per second, which was a pretty high resolution for 2015. And this doesn't really look 4K. It is technically, but um, again, just typical of the era. The selfie camera is five megapixels and it's just not that good. Very typical yet again for 2015. And I mean, it'll take a picture of your face. Overall, the camera is exactly how you would expect it to be. Mediocre at best and awful at worst, but for a six year old phone, it's hard to ask for anything more. The one thing we could ask for more for is software support. As this phone only got two major software updates past Android 5. Today, it's only upgradable to Android 7 Nougat, and man, does it ever feel its age with this old UI from Samsung. I hate how little Samsung has historically updated their phones. This was an expensive flagship option in 2015, and the fact that it didn't get updates past 2017 is an absolute joke. There's no other way to say it. The iPhone 6S from the same year, 2015, is still getting new software as of recording this video with iOS 14, and that's just absolutely absurd. And it's not like the specs couldn't have handled past Android 7. We have the Exynos 7 Octa 7420 chipset and 3 gigs of RAM, no Snapdragon this year, and this would actually be the first 64-bit processor in a Samsung flagship. That fact alone really should have been enough to get in an extra update or two, but it is what it is. Storage options were 32, 64, or 128 gigs, and of course there was no expandable storage, so what you got you'd be stuck with forever. The batteries were decently large, being around 25-50 milliamp hours in the regular S6, and a very slightly larger 2600 in the S6 Edge. A half decade ago, uh, these phones would have been fine battery-wise, but nowadays not so much, as most of them would have been used over the years, and with that, battery degradation is just inevitable. And of course, this phone's battery wasn't replaceable, at least to the general user. Getting the phone open is a pain in 
a half and not worth doing, which is kind of ironic given only a year before, Samsung had an ad campaign making fun of iPhones for not having swappable batteries. Yeah, good one there, Samsung. Actually, using this phone is a much better experience than the S5, which had a confusing and bloated UI, especially in settings. Here, it's definitely been streamlined, which I appreciate, and that's the one benefit to a few updates is that this phone still feels pretty spiffy moving around the UI, at least for the most part. And even with the old Android 7, we can still download apps. Not everything, but most major apps and uh, social media and whatnot will be available to use, although performance will vary greatly as not everything's going to be optimized for the older device. This phone doesn't feel six years old, in large part because it doesn't look like a six-year-old phone to me. But it is, and no matter which way you look at it, the S6 just isn't a worthwhile experience anymore compared to basically any newer option. I'd encourage you to consider upgrading if you still somehow have one of these, although hey, if it's working for you, you might as well run it into the ground and get as much life out of it as you can. If you were thinking about buying the S6 for some reason, don't. The S7 would be a much better option, and I'll link my review of that in the description below, but you really shouldn't buy that one either. Older phones like this certainly can have their use cases, but because the batteries aren't easily replaceable, getting even a day out of it will be nigh on impossible with a pre-owned option, and that alone should make it a no-no for most people. Ultimately, the Galaxy S6 and S6 Edge are just fascinating phones to me. They were such a big leap forward back in 2015, and looking back, have actually aged pretty well thanks to the design. And yet, they managed to be among the most hated Galaxy phones ever. At least the S7 seemed to fix most issues people had, and for better or for worse, the S6 set up Samsung in a great position to continue making flagship phones in the future. And with that, I think I'm right about done here. Did any of you actually have the Galaxy S6 back in the day? What did you think of it? Did you like it? It certainly wasn't a bad phone, it just uh, didn't feel like a Samsung to a lot of people. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And with that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.